I could crunch out all these big numbers and I eventually get the right answer. But there's an awesome, very cool, awesome, awesome way using the, the remainder theorem. The remainder theorem says take that number right there and stick it on the outside and then take all the coefficients, put them over here, what, and do the synthetic division. Whatever number you get in that remainder, that would be the answer. Well, if we do the synthetic division, we bring down the 6, multiply it by 2, get 12, add that up, get 11, multiply it by 2 again, that 2 right there, get 22, add it up, get 7, multiply it by 2, get 14, add it up, get 16, multiply it by 2, get 32, add it up, 25. That number 25 is my answer, meaning to say if I would take... If I would take 2 and stick it into the polynomial, into that big polynomial, I would wind up getting 25. And that is to say that if I would crunch all these numbers out, I would eventually get uh, 25. By the way, I did crunch all the numbers in. I put in, I, I crunched this all out. I, it becomes 96 minus 8 minus 60 plus 4 minus 7, and it does indeed equal 25. So that is the remainder theorem. It gives us a quick way to find the value of a polynomial for, at a given x value. Or I should say the output for a given input. Now here's an important related concept. The zeros of a polynomial are the x values that make the y value equal to zero. And the factor theorem tells us that k is a factor of a polynomial if and only if x minus k is a factor of the polynomial. For example, x minus 3 is a factor of x squared minus x minus 6. And if you don't believe me, factor it out. So therefore, so that means that 3 is a 0 of x squared minus x minus 6. It also means that negative 2 is a 0 of the same polynomial. Let's do an example. I'm going to give you a, a, a third degree polynomial. I'll give you one of the zeros, one of the factors, and see if you can figure out all the zeros. For example, show that x plus 2 is a factor of the, polynom of the third degree polynomial, x cubed minus 6x squared minus x plus 3, and then find all the zeros. First, let's show that x plus 2 is a factor, and in order to do that, I want to show that negative 2 is a 0, so I'm going to do that using synthetic division. If I do synthetic division and I get a remainder of 0, that means it is a factor. That means negative 2 is a 0, and x plus 2 is a factor. Well, we see with synthetic division that negative 2 is indeed a 0, because I bring down the 1, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, add I get negative 8, uh, negative 2 times negative 8 is 16, add I get 15, negative 2 times 15 is negative 30, add positive 30 and negative 30, and I get 0. So therefore, x plus 2 is a factor, which means that my original third degree polynomial can be written as x plus 2 times this quadratic. Where did I get this quadratic from? from the 1, the negative 8, and the 15. Now, this quadratic I could factor uh, just by factoring a quadratic. I want two numbers that multiply to f positive 15 and add up to negative 8. And even I know that, that that would be x minus 3 and x minus 5, which means that the three zeros of this polynomial are negative 2, 3, and 5, which means also if I would graph this uh, function... I mean, if I were to graph y equals x cubed minus 6x squared minus x plus 30, which is our original polynomial, this would be the graph. It would hit the x-axis at negative 2, positive 3, and positive 5. Where would it hit, where would it hit the y-axis? Pause the video and think about that for a second and tell me the answer. That's right. It would hit the y-axis at 30. I want to take this opportunity to remind everyone of the fundamental theorem of algebra, which states that an nth degree polynomial will have... Uh, n complex roots. Roots are the same as zeros. The point here being that we started with a third degree polynomial and we got three zeros, which means that's all there are. That's, that's all there is. Ain't no more zeros, folks. We got them all. Yay!